I'm Sophie. I'm Pablo. And this is our project, Night Hunter. So, um, our early concept for this game was something like an invisible maze that you could only hear. Mm -hmm. um, so, we had the idea of sort of trying to... Our, the I, original idea came from the idea of um, superheroes who have like enhanced senses. Since this was to be an audio-only game, we thought, how can we sort of enhance your hearing? We thought, what if you could hear the things that you can't see? So the idea was that you would try to move through a maze. You would hear um, what you would use something like sonar to try to, um, like you'd send out a wave. It would make a sound. You could tell where it was in space and avoid it. That's pretty hard, <laughs> as it turns out. Um, one of the things we wanted to explore by making this game was how good are people, or how good are people at actually figuring out where that invisible thing is. Turns out the answer is not very good. If you're trying mm. to avoid something, that's very important that you are very good because you can't tell where the edges are. You can just kind of tell it's vaguely over there. Mm. So, um, yeah, yeah, our original, when we did it, original um, play storming, sort of yeah. um, playing around with physical objects to come up with a concept, our original concept, uh, we, we split two tables up and we put objects down to represent sound sources and we, ha and we had people walk through it and when they got close to a sound source we would kind of ping and that was like our original ideating sort of play test. Um, but after that we transitioned into um, more of a collection kind of game because it's hard to detect those edges and so with our, with our, fi our first physical play test we had one player wearing blackout glasses um, so they were effectively blind. And then a bunch of our playtesting um, helpers who are in this room um, would act as sound sources that the player is trying to collect. And so um, they would move opposite the direction where the player is facing. So it's as though they're always moving forward relative to all the other people. And all the sound sources would each um, take a step yeah. in cadence and then make some sort of sound, like we did clapping at first, yeah. but we, we had a lot of uh, actually very important findings just from this first play test. Yeah, um, one of the things we found out is that if everyone is making the same sound at the same time, it's really, mm. really hard to figure out where they're coming from. It's just one big cloud of what the heck is yeah. going on. Um, and it was also pretty hard to try to even, like, we had to show people how to move at first. It was hard to understand just from a um, description. Mm -hmm. Like, if he's looking at me, I'm going this way. Mm -hmm. And um, we had to have someone pointing which way the person was looking. Yeah. So we tried a second round where, the, um, where everyone was making a different noise and they weren't moving in sync. And it proved really helpful for our playtester who could lock on to one sound, turn toward it until they got close enough. When the person got close enough, tapped on the shoulder, they were out, collected, basically. And they got slowly faster and faster, just locking onto that one individual sound pointing towards it, collecting it, until they were all out. We had a timer for that second round. The timer was not necessary. Mm -hmm. So we're like, wait, yay, <laughs> this works so much better. So we moved on to making a Unity prototype. Yeah, so our original Unity prototype was kind of like this. It was, it was a sort of a duplication of this, where uh, the frames were in the center of the screen, and then there was kind of a cloud of sound sources around them, and they would move against where the player was looking. So again, it was like they were flying around trying to collect these sound sources. But um, we quickly found out that it was, like um, the other team mentioned, is that it's very hard to determine or to, to lock onto something when you can, when there's like yeah, variance on the z-axis, when you yeah. can um, look up and down. So we flattened it so that they were all around you. but. Even then, it was still hard, pretty hard to focus on each individual sound. Yeah, so we decided to change to sort of an endless runner prototype, where mm -hmm. the idea is that you're here, things are constantly coming at you, mm -hmm. and you have to turn your head so that they will move toward you. It's like, there's something coming over here. Oh, I can hear that. Oh, now it's coming at me. Collected. Huzzah. Mm -hmm. So we transitioned to a linear experience. Yeah. So 
Our final product is Night Hunter. The idea is that it's a little hard to see in this particular photo, but you're this tiny little um, arrow ship thing. And there are small sound sources that you can hear. They're headed toward you. And yeah. you have to turn your head, wearing the frames, to find them. They will, if you are looking at it, it will move towards you. If, um, if you miss it, it hits a invisible plane behind you and is deleted and another one spawns because another thing we found was if there are multiple you will hear one over here and one over here and you can't tell which is which even if the sounds are different it's still really hard it's easier if the sounds are different it's still really hard yeah and, and another massive change we, uh, we made is that there is a UI now yeah so before we were just doing completely blind you're just um, you're only using your ears to play but um, we actually made this UI for um, playtesting initially, or for debugging, so that we could see the sounds coming at the player. But we thought, you know, maybe for a tutorial this would be really useful because then the player could kind of conceptualize what they're doing before they go blind. Um, but um, we decided to actually add it into the game so uh, you, you can always see where you are. and. You can see the sounds coming into view. They, they start out of view, so you still have to use your ears to localize it. But once you get close enough to it, you can see it, and then with more precision, you can um, actually collect it. Instead of having a full range of vision and sight, it's more like you have a really, really limited range of vision that's like being almost blind. Because uh, this is, like, you still have to get yourself in the general area using your um, auditory senses, and then you can see it, and then that helps with the final... Like, oh, it's right here. I thought it was here-ish. Oh, I can turn it. I can see it now. It's there. Yeah, and with this version of the game, um, we felt like uh, now it was sort of... We, we didn't want players to rely too much on their visuals. We still wanted to get that audio-first gaming experience. So what we decided to do is have the screen occasionally go black so you can't see anything. And then you have to truly rely on just your ears to actually collect the sounds. So you'll be playing for a while and suddenly the screen's black and you're like, ah, oh, what's happening? Wait, I can still hear things. It must still be going. Yeah. Oh, oh, I still have to use my ears. And we kind of rationalize that as like a radar system failure. So like you're on this spaceship and you have yeah. a radar of like the, your immediate surroundings and then occasionally uh, for whatever technical reasons it goes black and then you're flying blind. But you can still use your other sensors, aka your ears, to navigate.